Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 8th of October. Now, I'm getting lots of questions. Um, is it true that uh, viral uh, ribonucleic acid from the vaccines has been found in uh, breast milk? And here's the answer here from this paper from a, a peer-reviewed medical journal, Journal of the American and Medical Association, Detection of Messenger RNA COVID Vaccine in Human Breast Milk. Um, so the answer to this question is uh, yes, and we're going to give evidence from this paper. And as always, we'll be quoting lots of official sources and being careful not to contradict any official guidelines. So let's look at this uh, in some detail because it is, it is a sensitive topic, of course. So uh, Journal of the American Medical Association, Pediatrics. Now, this is what you call a research letter. These can be uh, obviously done much quicker than a full research project. Uh, but it's laid out there like a small scale research project. And of course, uh, this is a uh, peer reviewed journal. So high confidence in this. Uh, the work was actually carried out mostly on uh, Long Island, New York. Um, so it's looking, it's looking like a pretty good piece of uh, scientific detective work. Uh, just published about a week ago, eight, well, it's 8th, 8th of October now, so recently published, end of September. Um, now, initial messenger RNA, mRNA vaccines, clinical trials excluded several vulnerable groups, according to this paper. Uh, young children and lactating individuals, which we would call breastfeeding women um, in England, uh, at least most of us would, um, are, uh, were excluded from the trial. Now, safety and efficacy of the BNT uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Now, this was the original um, vaccine paper that we respond. Well, the original Pfizer one. We did it in great detail at the time. Um, so based on this original clinical trial, at least for the, uh, the, the this particular vaccine, uh, we find that the randomly assigned person, 16 years of old and 16 years of age and older, so um, you had to be 16 to get in the trial. So uh, that was the requirement for the trial. Now um, the current recommendation uh, from the FDA, based on that and presumably other work as well, um, today uh, this is the announcement from the FDA. Today the Food and Drug Administration authorised emergency use of Moderna COVID vaccine. Va but Moderna and, and the Pfizer vaccine um, for the prevention of COVID-19 to include use in children down to six months of age. So the original research was based on, um, you had to be 16 and over, and, and now they've gone down to six months and over. Um, that was as cited, and obviously we're being careful to cite the original site, so that is, that is the particular vaccine uh, paper there. And this is the FDA uh, site, so we're being careful to cite official uh, data, of course. Um, now, um, you might have your opinions on how justified the difference is, but the, 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 we're just citing the, uh, the official papers. Back to the, uh, the JAMA paper. Uh, now, this is from the JAMA paper. The US Food and Drug Administration deferred the decision to authorise COVID-19 vaccines for infants younger than six until more da data was available because of the potential priming of the child's... Where are we? Right piece of paper. Priming of the child's um, immune response uh, uh, that may alter their immunity. So... A bit difficult to work out what they're saying here. They seem to be saying that giving a vaccine under the age of six months could potentially um, prime the child's immune response with unpredictable consequences, is what, is what they're saying. Um, of course, a child that's seven months old uh, is only one month older than a child that's uh, six months old, but that's where they put the, that's where they put the cut off. Now, likewise, uh, being careful to cite official data, a COVID-19 vaccine while pregnant and breastfeeding. This is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, I'm using the US sites here. The, the UK uh, advice is uh, it's worded differently, but it's essentially, it's essentially the same. There's no real scientific uh, applied clinical difference between the, the advice in the two nations. Um, so re-breastfeeding re, re um, mothers, um, direct quote, COVID vaccine is recommended for all people six months and older. This includes people who are pregnant, uh, breastfeeding, trying to get pregnant now or might become pregnant in the future. So it sounds pretty uh, inclusive. So certainly the breastfeeding thing is, uh, 
is included, people that breastfeeding can be vaccinated. So back, back to the JAMA study again. Um, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends offering the COVID uh, mRNA vaccines to breastfeeding individuals. Um, okay, we'll ignore their terminology for now. Um, but it's clearly saying, so th this is a direct quote from the JAMA paper, quoting the, uh, giving evidence from the um, CDC. Although the possible passage of vaccine mRNAs in breast milk resulting in infant's exposure at younger than six months was not investigated. So this is not me saying this. This is this is uh, this is this paper here uh, saying it was not uh, investigated. And these, of course, are the authors of the paper in uh, JAMA. So it was not investigated. Now, um, some people might think it's better to do the research first and then do the clinical interventions uh, afterwards. Um, that's the way I've normally learned to do things, but you know, times are changing. We have to be flexible, I suppose. Um, this study investigated whether the COVID um, mRNA vaccine can be detected in the expressed breast milk of lactating individuals, breastfeeding women. Okay, so in, in other words... Um, that the milk was expressed using from some form of suction pump, a routine, routine of course. Um, and uh, these were receiving the vaccines within six months after delivery. Now the number is small, it was 11. Um, so this is about proof of principle really, um, but the number 11, okay, 11 individuals there, but this is what they found. Uh, Moderna RNA um, vaccine uh, five, uh, F f so Moderna, five uh, five people vaccinated. Pfizer, six people vaccinated. So it's, bo it's both the both the uh, mRNA uh, vaccines. Uh, samples of expressed breast milk were collected before vaccinations to act as the control, which is good. And five day uh, for five days post uh, vaccination. So it makes makes perfect sense. So th 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 this is called uh, this is standard in research. It's called test retest. Use the same group as their own controls, just at different times. 131 samples of expressed breast milk were collected one to five hours after vaccine sorry one hour to five days after vaccine uh, administration all sounds uh, perfectly reasonable uh, the presence of covid vaccine in an mrna uh, in different milk fractions so what they did was they looked at milk fractions so so they looked at like the the more fluid component the fatty component and uh, they also found that a lot of the virus was in these things called extracellular uh, vesicles. So the a vesicle is just a fluid-filled compartment that we normally find in cells, but you get some in, in the breast milk. And that's where they found most of the, uh, most of the MR, uh, mRNA from the, uh, the vaccine. Uh, essayed using a two-step quantitative reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. So, yeah, basically using the PCR test, which is, of course, completely fine. Now, the results... Uh, trace amounts of the uh, both both vaccines, mRNA vaccines, were detected in seven samples from five different participants. So seven samples from five individuals out of the eleven. Um, so five out of eleven is um, what percentage is five of eleven? I don't know. Work, work it out for yourself. Um, whatever percentage that is. Uh, at various times up to 45 hours after post-vaccination so okay would have been nice to carry on for longer um why not carry on for a week after vaccination or two weeks after vaccination anyway that's 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 what they did um 45 hours post-vaccination uh, no vaccine rna was detected uh in uh pre-vaccination so the control group uh, of course uh, prior to vaccination no mrna was detected so there we go, it's definitively been uh, detected. Now, more to say, of course. Uh, the sporadic presence of trace quantities of COVID-19 vaccine, me M messenger ribonucleic acid detected in express breast milk, uh, suggests that breastfeeding after COVID-19 is safe. Um, so they have found these um, trace amounts of vaccine, and from that, they seem to conclude that the uh, it's uh, it's safe. I, I'll be very careful with wording here. These, these are direct quotes from the, the paper. Suggests that breastfeeding after COVID-19 vaccine is safe. So having found the mRNA in these samples, they say that it's safe. 
But um, <clears throat> then they say particularly beyond 48 hours after vaccination. But it would have been nice if they carried on collecting samples, as we say, for several days, but it was not done. Uh, these data demonstrate for the first time the biodistribution of COVID-19 mRNA vaccines to mammary cells, to breast cells. And the potential ability um, of tissue uh, extracellular vesicles to package the mRNA vaccine that can be transported to distant cells. Now, to me, one of the most interesting observations about this study is that the vaccine got from the arm to the breast. And that's a long way in uh, physiological terms. Now, the authors say that it could have spread via the blood or could have spread via the lymphatics. Now, I would have thought spreading via the lymphatics is unlikely because the lymphatics is a one-way flow. There's valves in the lymphatic vessels that prevent the backflow, and it goes towards a central system, eventually draining into the uh, jugular, uh, into the uh, jugular, um, round, round about here, the, the, the junction between the jugular and the clavicular veins, drains back into the systemic circulation. So I think the hematogenic uh, spread is probably more likely in the blood. Not excluding the lymph, if the authors say that, they've probably got their reasons for that, they don't give them. Um, I'm not, you know, they, they, could, they could have reasons I don't understand, but the blood is probably more likely. Um, but that means if the vaccine can spread from the arm to the breast, the mRNA can spread from the arm to the breast, then the, the way it got to the breast is, unless it's lymphatic, and as I say, it's likely to be in the blood hematogenic, means it's via systemic spread because the blood goes everywhere. So that would mean that these, um, these extracellular vesicles would go everywhere. Uh, that includes your ears, uh, your nose, uh, your toes, your myocardium, your lungs, your kidneys, your liver. Uh, the systemic circulation goes uh, around the whole body, it is systemic. So that's the first time that had been identified. Now, um, the researchers in this paper, in this paper, talk about rats, studies in rats. But the actual work they're referring to um, was actually done, as far as I can see, in, uh, in mice. So this seems to be the actual paper they're referring to, which is mice. So um, it looks like the authors got rats and mice confused. We, I suppose we can excuse that. In a peer-reviewed journal, though, it is surprising. You would expect all these references to be meticulously checked. Um, but this one clearly says in mice. But there we go. Um, so um, rats stroke mice. Probably doesn't matter too much. They're both sort of small animals and mammals. Right, up to three days following intramuscular administration of vaccines. Uh, low vaccine mRNA levels were detected in the heart, lung, testis, brain tissue, indicating tissue biodistribution, kind of all over the place. So these authors uh, of this paper seem to be saying this is consistent well, they're certainly not saying it's inconsistent with the uh, rat stroke mice studies that it can the uh, the mRNA can go round the whole uh, body. So vaccine administration. This is the this is not for me. This is what the authors think. Vaccine administration goes into these lipid nanoparticles containing the mRNA vaccine. That must go into the systemic circulation, whether it's via the lymphatics or the blood. That goes to the mammary glands, so it's hematogenesis and or lymphatic roots is the way they say it get there. So it's systemic, it's going everywhere. It can't get to the breast if it's not via some systemic route, I don't think. Vaccine mRNA released into the mammary cell cytosol, that's the fluid round about the nucleus in the cell. Um, that from there, it's recruited into developing uh, extra extracellular vesicles, and from there, it's secreted into the uh, breast milk. The authors then say caution is warranted about breastfeeding children younger than six months in the first 48 hours after maternal vaccination until more safety studies are conducted. So, you might think the authors have slightly contradicted themselves there, but that's kind of in their conclusion bit there. Okay, so there we go. Um, this is evidence for um, systemic absorption of mRNA uh, vaccine 
in uh, human breastfeeding women, consistent with the data from uh, rats. That means the mRNA can get all around the body. Now, we have to be very clear about this. Um, we are not, what we're not saying here. So this is from the uh, COVID-19 medical misinformation policy. And just for clarification on this, you can look at these links for yourself. I've put the links there. Um, this is the uh, guidelines that, of course, we all have to follow on YouTube uh, there. And there's another one uh, there. And I'm going to look at the, uh, the relevant parts to make sure we're uh, not contradicting anything. So um, claims about COVID-19 vaccine that contradict expert uh, consensus from local health authorities. So we've been careful to, in this case, we've quoted the CDC and the FDA and a peer reviewed journal article. Uh, claims that an approved COVID vaccine will cause death, infertility, miscarriage, autism or contraction of other diseases. Clearly, we haven't made those uh, claims. Um, also, uh, vaccine safety. Uh, we haven't posted content that alleges that vaccine causes chronic side effects outside of the rare side effects that are recognised by health authorities. Uh, we've not commented on the efficacy of the vaccines, of course. Um, we certainly haven't said that... Um, uh, vaccines do not reduce transmission or contraction of disease so um, clearly we haven't said that we haven't been talking about transmission and we haven't been talking about ingredients um, but there we go um, I'll let you comment on on whether that information concerns you or not thank you for watching